All right, another day and I'm out for some morning exercise. Uh, except I have a little one with me today, so I guess I'm just walking. Uh, let's see, then after this, I have some yard work to do that I'll do as my like functional exercise. That's what I'm calling it. And then, let's see, we've got church and I have some CAD work to do. I have a couple pry bars to make. I'll probably do the pry bars. Like I'll get those started in the machine and then do the CAD while it's running. Yeah, that's pretty much my plan for today. More video editing, of course. I was gonna set my camera up for a time lapse back there, but there are just mosquitoes everywhere, and if I stop, they swarm me. Are you okay, Abby? Did they get you? Okay. Time to brave the mosquito swarm and get this tree cut up. There really are mosquitoes everywhere here. One of the fun things about having a piece of property with just a ton of trees on it is there's always stuff falling on you. We had the top of one of these pine trees come down. It took out a second pine tree top with it. And now I've been cutting it up over the course of a couple days. This is what I have left after, I don't know, probably six hours of work, eight hours of work. That was about half an hour of work. Didn't quite get it all done, but I'm pretty close. Hopefully in just like one more work session, I can finish getting it cut up and get it dragged off to the burn pile. Chickens. Come on, you guys were supposed to majestically pour out of the shop. The shop, the coop. It's finally time to make some pry bars and then do that CAD that I've been promising for five videos now. I think today's the day where it actually happens. Unless the pry bars go badly. I guess that's a possibility, but I don't think they will. I've made so many pry bars at this point, they're pretty easy. The first step on these pry bars is to generate the 3D models using the four different parameters that define the size and shape of the pry bar. For the first pry bar, this is my very last Kickstart backer. They just finished their reward survey, and so I'm making their pry bar now. The other pry bar was for one of our Patreons who ordered through my website, which is run by Etsy, by the way. So I have his customization information right here. Then in Fusion, all I have to do is I hit B, which pulls up my parameter menu, and then I can start typing in the parameters. So we switch back over. He wants a height of six millimeters. So I just type in six millimeters. The length was 80 millimeters, 80 millimeters. The width of 18 millimeters. And I can take these in either inches or millimeters. And a curvature of one, which is unitless, but in this case, it means that it is front heavy. And there's his pry bar. The only other step is I need to change the serial number which I can do down here in my sketch. And I know that this one is serial number 93. So type that in and bam, pry bar is ready to cut. So I just have to save that now. I'm going to do one specifically as a better keychain standard pry bar, which is something a lot of people have been asking for. Um, and I'm just gonna play with this design to get something that I like. I've done enough of these that I kind of have an idea of what you guys would like. Maybe something a little bit bigger because I have the small, I have the small pry bars from 33 EDC. So let's do a three inch one that's still, it's long and skinny. Try that, it's not bad. Maybe a little bit taller. And if you guys want to design your own pry bar, I have an online tool. Um, the the URL is parametricproducts.com, and you can do all of this in real time on a, uh, a website. This looks good. This is about like the the carabin or the pry bar that I've carried in my my keychain. Then I can switch to my master cam file and update that. It'll update all the different models in here, and then I just need to regenerate my code. And when that's as soon as that's done, I'm just gonna post right here, these two NC programs that are labeled bottoms and tops. And then I just need to put them in the machine, cut all the material to length, not in that order, and hit run. That should all be ready to go now. I had to switch one of the socket head cap screws I had for a hex bolt 
because one of those holes has been stripped out forever and I still haven't fixed it, but I was a little bit worried about the work holding today. So I went and I found a longer bolt, um, which still doesn't have very great engagement because those threads are just really clapped out at this point. Um, but it has enough where it was able to bite. So it's a lot better than nothing. Someone sent me so a helicoil kit to fix that. I still don't know who it was. Thank you, whoever you are. Um, I just haven't gone around to it and I don't make these pry bars often enough to bother. But if you guys order more pry bars, I'll fix it. Yeah, it should do it. All right, let's see if we break anything. We seem to be good. In about an hour, those will be ready to flip over and then they'll have about 20 minutes of machining on the B side. At this point, even though I have never run this code before, I didn't simulate it, I am comfortable enough with my process that I have no problem just letting the machine run. While I haven't run this specific code before, like I've used the same tool paths and generations hundreds of times to make sure that it always gives me good safe code. So I don't know, it probably freaks out some of you machinists, but I've done this enough where, where I'm comfortable with it. This is editor AJ. Why did I say that? Who would ever say that before they started machining? You can say things like that after you're done. Stupid AJ. It's really hot in my shop right now, so I'm gonna go do this fusion work in my house. This is how I originally came up with the carabiner design. Inside Fusion 360, which is my design software, you can do a stress simulation. So in this case, I have a two and a half pound force pushing on the end of my carabiner. Two and a half pounds is a good feel for, for opening something like this. And then you can, the computer can simulate what it'll look like with that force on. In this case, it'll open up about yay much. So now I'm gonna to try to change the design to give it some little supports in here, but I don't wanna change the feel of the carabiner too much. I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit springier, but it can't be too much. So now I'm gonna start playing around with some added webbings in here and see what it does to the simulation. Did someone leave you in here again? Who keeps leaving you in here? Hi. So, okay, now I have a little web in here and you can see that with the same amount of force, it goes back much less, meaning this is a much stiffer carabiner. So I think I wanna get that force down a little bit more. And by force, I mean I wanna get it more flexible so it goes farther. And that one's not that much different. Ooh, that one's pretty good. This one is just slightly less flexible. This may be our winner right here, but I wanna play with simulations just a little bit more. I added a second little webbing there and it basically didn't change how much it deforms at all, which tells me that this back strip here isn't important. It's all about this curve. This is the design that I'm happiest with so far, though I may go back and rearrange some of this for aesthetic reasons. I have like these two little decorative slots up here, which are now really small and all like weighted to the top of the carabiner. And they're kind of a different design language than these little gusset things here, those little webs. And so I may need to go back and replace those decorative slots with like a whole bunch of webs or something just to kind of keep some consistent design language throughout the whole carabiner. I think I have a design I'm happy with. Uh, I have not done the cam for that yet. I'll have to reevaluate my strategies and start over basically from scratch. But I don't think that'll take me too long. I decided, I, I was starting to drag. Like I, I was getting tired and not focusing. So I decided to go ahead and take a walk back here in the nice little shady path that we have. Uh, I'm gonna walk back and forth probably twice and then I'll go flip the pry bar and then I guess finish up the cam. Oh, and I have a video to edit. I have yesterday's video to edit. So I should probably do that tonight too. Rooster. Hello, Mr. Rooster. Uh-oh. We broke a tool. That's the, um, the roughing end mill, so it didn't get very far in the code, but the uh, tool breakage detection caught it. This is something I have not seen before on this fixture. That part is actually moved. That's probably what broke it is either, well, I don't know if it broke it and then moved the part or if it um, 
or if it moved because or if it broke because the part moved but that is interesting i know why it moved when i was first tightening all these screws down i i do the kind of thing where you just loosely tighten them all and then you go back and you do a final tighten except in this case i didn't do a final tighten and a lot of these screws are loose and it's because i got distracted by that bolt right there so fortunately this fixture like you don't need a ton of hold down force for this fixture to work um, but it did cause that one to slide so that was just dumb user error now on the bright side i'm pretty sure these holes are going to be in the right place because the drill is just going to do a twisting force on it which the walls of the fixture will counteract it's not going to try to move it this way which is the only place it has freedom to move but the adaptive, either here or there, would be enough to move it. So I, I would be willing to bet that this pry bar is still usable. Um, it, it has almost removed no material. So I'm just gonna restart the code and, and hope it all works out. Okay, it's air cutting that little locating feature, which I think means it's in the right place. And it probably only moved on the adaptive toolpath. So I think we have a good recovery here. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. It's time to go back into my nice cool house. I was too tired to, to do the cam, so I just moved to video editing, which is a little, requires a little bit less focus and got yesterday's video edited. So now I can get that one uploaded to YouTube and, and scheduled to go out. About an hour ago, I went out to the shop and flipped my parts over, started them on op two. Uh, I was going to go back out there and get them in the tumbler tonight, but it just got late and I ran out of time. I finished editing yesterday's video, so that's good, and we'll be out, I don't know, the day before this video. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.